Welcome to the second video in a three-part series. Remember, electricity can be dangerous. This is only low voltage wiring today, but in the third video, we're going to do high voltage. So in part two, we're going to build out the PCB. The soldering is hard to see, so I use magnifying glasses, but reading glasses might work for you. You can get a build kit from matter-replicator.com, which includes the Nexteon display, the temperature probe, the pressure transducer, some high pressure hose, a 3D printed display housing, one four pin JST and three three pins. This is a stainless steel T connector that's used to get the pressure transducer in the loop. The pressure transducer will screw right into that and you can seal it with this Loctite 55 thread sealant. Use a very good thread sealant. I'm not even sure that Teflon tape is good enough. Loctite 565 is also excellent. We have a solid state relay. We have the ST debugger. There's a few different kinds, so some of them look different. You can attach the display housing with magnets. We have the STM32 black pill, two types of wire, 18 gauge and 26 gauge. And then a bag of small parts like terminals, cable ties, heat shrink tubing. There's an O-ring in there. One thing that we don't include is hose clamps because the good ones require a $20 tool. And I didn't want to make people have to buy that if they already own it. If you don't want to buy that, you might try hardware store hose clamps. I personally don't know if they'll work. They may work, but I know they don't provide uniform pressure. You're going to 3D print a PCB enclosure, but I also sell these already printed on matter-replicator.com. You can attach them to the coffee machine with either double-sided tape or you could glue magnets on the back and I'll include um, tape if you get it from me. When you print it, don't use PLA because it's only heat rated up to 50 degrees Celsius. I print them in PETG. In order to do the soldering, I secure the PCB into a vise. I push in the black terminal strips and then put in the ones that we have to solder into that. Just make sure you put the longer end into the socket. And then we're going to take the STM32 black pill and carefully place it on top of this. And after you place it on top, you want to look at it from the side and make sure that there's no gap between the PCB of the black pill and the terminal strip. Now to solder, what you want to do is make sure that the soldering iron hits the pin and it hits the PCB trace. And then once it gets hot, you can very briefly touch the solder to the tip of the iron, but then move it off and onto the opposite side of the pin because the heat causes the solder to flow towards the hotter area. And that uh, that's what really makes it go all the way around. So you don't melt the solder on the soldering iron. You melt it onto the pin and the trace. But as I mentioned, I do briefly touch it to the soldering iron to get it started.
Now we're going to put in the pins that the debugger connects to, and you have to solder that from behind. So if you lay it flat on a surface, it will stay in place while you solder it. Also, I make sure to connect um, this all the way around, and sometimes there's solder gaps. But if you look at it under a magnifier or microscope, you could spot flaws and you could go back and fix them. But when everything looks good, you could use a flush cutter and cut off the high spots. Now you could use even pressure and seat this in. Make sure that the USB connector is pointing outward. So now we're going to make the cables. If you take a look at the schematic, don't just look at the wire colors because they don't match the JST wire colors. You have to look at the labels on the schematic and trace that wire all the way through. So this LCD cable needs the four pin JST and I plug that in because then I can clearly see the orientation. And just remember, five volts goes to five volts and ground goes to ground, but Rx does not go to Rx. Rx goes to Tx and Tx goes to Rx. That's a common thing for doing serial connections. They have to cross over. So if you take the cable that came with the display, you can cut the ends off it and then strip the wires. And what we're going to do is put heat shrink tubing on each of these four wires and we're going to splice in 26 gauge wire to extend the length of this to be long enough to get onto the machine and through the machine. If you want to learn how to splice wires properly, there's YouTube videos that show how you wrap the strands around each other for a very strong connection. This won't be under any stress because it's not in a rocket ship or a race car. So in this video, you'll just see me twist the wires together and apply solder. I then cut off the extended portion, flatten it down, and put the heat shrink tubing over it. So when you're done with the assembly, it should look something like this. So for the pressure cable, we have three wires, plus, minus, and signal. And there's yellow, black, and red, but the JST connector is oriented in a way where yellow does not connect to yellow and red does not connect to red. You have to swap those. So we're going to do black to black, red to yellow, and yellow to red. All right, and notice again that red goes to yellow, yellow goes to red, at least in my example. Now we're going to extend this temperature sensor. We need a much longer wire on it. If you look at the schematic, you can see there's a plus and a minus. And I'm going to use a red wire for plus and a black wire for minus. That's the most common convention for DC wiring. I'm putting ferrules on the end. If you don't have a ferrule crimping tool, then you could just tin the wires and put them in. Um, that's actually not the most correct thing to do, but putting stranded wire into screw terminals is actually worse than tinning the wire. So if you don't have ferrules, I personally would tin it. Now I'm doubling over this wire to make it a snugger fit inside the ferrule because I find that if I don't do this, it can pull out fairly easily. And then when I did it, I had to go up one size and ferrule to be able to get the wire into it. 
No, the designer of the PCB oriented the screw terminals facing inward, so a full-length ferrule will not fit. So what I do is use a flush cutter and cut a segment off it, and with a segment removed, then I am able to get it in, especially if I get a micro screwdriver and jiggle open the connector as wide as possible to help it go in. So for the switch cable, once again, there's wiring color conflicts, but look at the schematic. And this is going to use three wires, but we're gonna need four terminals because the black one has to split into two and connect onto two different switches. We're gonna go red into blue black into red and yellow into black. That's assuming your JSTs have the same color as mine. So double check with the schematic. Extend the wire and clamp on the terminals. I double up the wire in it. It's the only way I could make it not pull out. Sometimes I have to crimp it in two different positions. I always check it by tugging gently. And if it feels a little loose, I might put a second crimp on it. And if it pulls out, then I start over. And that does happen to me, especially because these red crimp terminals are the smallest kind, but they're still on the large side for this size wire. And when you're done, it should look like this. Notice the black has the two ends on it but I did make the colors match up with the colors on the schematic to plug into the switches. For the solid state relay, it's pretty simple because there's only two wires. Um, the JST has three, but one of them isn't used. And if you look on the schematic, you could just cut off the wire for the one that's not used to reduce any confusion later. And you can see at this orientation, the top is ground and the schematic has it as black. But the JST doesn't have that color. So we are going to do some wire color swaps. And I like it so that the remote end that connects to the SSR makes sense. So I'm going to add a red and a black and have the red be plus and the black be minus. Now when you screw it into the DC side of the SSR, I'm using ferrules with the wire doubled up under it. If you don't have ferrules, you could just wrap the stranded wire under the screw a few times and you should be okay. Or you could crimp on horseshoe shaped terminals or circular ones. It's kind of nice just to buy a terminal kit, have the crimper and assorted connectors and you find uses for them for other things later. And that's it. I'll see you in video three where we actually get this into the machine.